Hey guys, I'm Gabriel Badan, and we are here to discuss the internal and external hardware of the computer. So as you can see here, we have a tower-shaped case, also known as the chassis. But this is specifically a mid-tower chassis. Inside this case, you will see the main component, known as the motherboard, and other hardware connected to it. And here's the motherboard. It's rectangular dimension, and it's what connects the rest of the parts inside and as well as the other hardware outside. So this is the central processing unit, or the CPU. It is actually the brain of the computer because it does almost all of the thinking and calculation that enables the computer to function. And this is an example of a heat sink. It is usually comprised of aluminum fins and a fan which draws away the heat from the processor and cools it down. And this is the chipset. This mediates the communication between the CPU and the other components of the system. And this is the RAM. This stores all the running processes including the application and operating system. Up next are the internal buses. This connects the CPU to other internal components. Then we have the external buses. This supports ports for external devices. Here in the internal buses, you can find the North Bridge for the RAM and PCI Express and the SATA for the disk drives. And this is the power supply unit. It supplies power to other components in a computer. It is typically designed to convert AC electric power from the mains to usable low voltage DC power for the internal components of the computer. And this is the video display controller, or the graphics card. It produces the output for the monitor. It could either be built in into the motherboard or attached in its own separate slot, like this. And this is the sound card. It enables the computer to output sound to audio devices. Most computers nowadays have sound cards built in into their motherboards, but most common users prefer to install separate sound cards for an upgrade, like this. Now we move on to the external hardware of the computer. First is the keyboard, which is one of the primary input devices used with a computer. It is very similar to a keyboard of a typewriter. It has, the le it has letters, numbers, and other symbols in the computer. It can execute commands such as saving or printing files. Parts of a keyboard. First off is the typing keypad. It is at the center of the keyboard, which includes the space bar, the letters, and the numbers. It is the largest number of keys, and this is the area you use mostly when you do word processing. And this is the numeric keypad. It is usually located at the right side of the keyboard and arranged like a standard calculator. These are the function keys. It starts from F1 to F12. These keys are used for special purposes. And the special keys for the Alt, Control, Shift, and Tab. These keys enable specific functions. The navigation keys, which are the cursor and screen controls. These are the up, down, left, and right arrows. Then, and finally, the escape key, which is often displayed as ESC. And it is located at the upper left-hand corner and it is used to cancel operations. Of different kinds of keyboards. The gaming keyboard, the wireless keyboard, the internet keyboard, the compact keyboard, and the virtual keyboard. The second external hardware of the computer is the monitor. This is an LED monitor. Monitors are screens that display information of the computer. Next is the mouse. This is a gaming mouse. A mouse moves your cursor when you want to activate something. All you have to do is click so that it'll respond. Now there are other peripherals. Some other peripherals are the gaming devices, image or video devices, and audio devices. This is an example of a gaming device. It's a game controller. It is obviously used for gaming purposes. And now we move on to the image or video devices. This is a printer with a built-in scanner. A printer is responsible for transferring data of a computer such as text, images, and photos to a hard copy. While a scanner provides input by analyzing images, printed text, handwriting, or an object. 
and the last audio device are the speakers. A speaker produces output that can be heard by the listener. And now we move on to the storage devices. This stores the data in the computer for later use and remains persistent even when there is no power. One example of this is the hard disk and the external hard drive. There are lots of types of removable storage devices, but I'll provide you with two examples. First is the flash drive, and the second is the DVD and CD-ROM and writer. And finally, we move on to the communication devices. One example of a communication device is the modem. The modem allows you to connect to the internet, and it is a contraction of the words modulator demodulator. And last but not the least, the router. Not only is it a Wi-Fi router, but it is also a network hub. It is a significant network communication device that allows wire wired or wireless devices to connect to the internet. And those are the internal and external hardware devices of the computer. Thank you for watching.